Um, we can't hear you. I think you're on mute. I think you accidentally put a filter on. Okay, is this better? Can you hear me okay? Good. Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on from where you are tuning in. I'm Mike Jabour, Chair of Art and Art History. This year, I have the distinct honor of welcoming all of you, graduates, faculty, families, and friends, to the Art and Art History Virtual Graduation Celebration. And I hope to see some of you at the in-person commencement event on Sunday. Who knew last March that we would be holding virtual graduation celebrations two years in a row? This year has been tough. Faculty reimagined our curriculum, learning how to offer our courses remotely or in person with social distancing. And students were asked to embrace this reimagined curriculum to adapt on the fly, to learn remotely from dorms or back home, and to try to filter out all the distractions that surround us in this chaotic, unprecedented moment in our nation's and our world's history. And yet, through it all, you persisted and you thrived. Students completed their coursework, honors theses, art history's virtual senior colloquium, studio arts capstone Zoom critiques and virtual exhibitions, and so much more. We built community over the internet, even though we were sometimes only feet apart. And through it all, our graduates learned about grit, perseverance, adaptability, and success in the face of adversity. Skills that will no doubt leave you poised to succeed in your future endeavors. We are so proud of your accomplishments over the past four years, in the past 16 months especially. Congratulations. We would like to take a moment, as is our tradition, to look back and celebrate each of our graduates individually. But before we do, I would like to spotlight a few accomplishments and recognitions from this graduating class. I am proud and delighted to announce Caitlin Blomo's induction to the Mortar Board Honor Society. Elizabeth Earle's Catron Scholarship for Artistic Development Award. Kristen Lauritsen's Monroe Scholarship. Hannah London's induction to the Phi Beta Kappa Honor Society. Hannah is also a Monroe Scholar. Charles Parsons, Woody Internship. And Charles, too, graduates with departmental honors. Kayla Payne's Joseph Palin Thorley Scholarship Award. Sarah Roberts graduates with departmental honors. Iris Wu's Catron Scholarship for Artistic Development Award and Joseph Palin Thorley Scholarship Award. Iris also graduates with departmental honors. And this year, we introduced three new scholarships. Thanks to the generous contributions of art and art history donors, I'm pleased to announce Iris Wu is the Studio Art Graduating Scholar. And next fall, Isabel Williams will be the Art History Graduating Scholar. And we have a new Merit Scholarship for Art History, the Webster Navarrete Excellence in Art History Award, which was established by Art History Professor Emerita Susan Webster and her husband, Hernan Navarrete. We are so grateful to Suzanne and Hernan for this incredibly generous contribution. Our inaugural recipients are Charles Parsons and Sarah Roberts. Congratulations to each of you. In addition to all these notable achievements, we have students looking ahead to careers in software engineering, management consultancy, art handling, financial analysis, literary programs through AmeriCorps, and illustration and tattoo art. While other graduates are pursuing studio residencies or advanced degrees in arts and heritage, human development counseling, museum studies, studio art, and art conservation. You are truly an impressive group, representing the range of paths possible with an art and art history degree and a rich liberal arts education. So, without further ado, our 2021 art and art history graduates. Alejandro Agarra, 
is a double major in art history and finance with a concentration in innovation and design. To him, one of the most rewarding aspects of the art history training is the ability to research and defend an argument, which has been in full display in his capstone project on Leonardo da Vinci's anatomy. He is passionate about the art market, financial technology, and venture capital, and had internships in many places. In his sophomore year, he co-founded Faraway.com, a bipartisan news outlet in the help to expose re uh, readers to diverse and well-versed opinions and to encourage discussion about important issues. In his spare time, he likes making pop art, reading biography, snowboarding, and playing golf. After graduation, he will join Accenture Consulting as a management consultant. Congratulations to Alejandro. Caitlin Blomo is a senior double majoring in art history and history. She is the vice president of Phi Alpha Theta, the History Honor Society, and is a member of NIAHD, the National Institute of American History and Democracy, through which she is currently interning with the Fairfield Foundation as a grant writer. She has been on the Dean's List all four of her years at William & Mary. Her two majors, similar as they may seem, enhanced one another in ways she finds surprising, each lending her a perspective on the other that was slightly different from that discipline's own view. Outside the classroom, she enjoys her time with the William & Mary Women's Club Lacrosse team, on which she has played all four years, having strong opinions on bad TV shows, printmaking, and educating her roommate on the correct way to scramble eggs, which is so important because there's no quicker way to size up a cook, in my opinion, than to see what they can and can't do with eggs. I've gone to know Abigail Shalom Daniel well over the last two years, serving as her instructor for four courses, including advanced printmaking this semester. Abby is a double major in studio art and computer science. As you might suspect, Abby has a wide variety of interests. In addition to being named to the Dean's List for the last four semesters, she has been the tech and marketing editor for Rocket Magazine and the merchandise chair for Omicron Beta. In our department, she has worked primarily in printmaking and painting. To quote her painting professor, John Lee, Abby has grown a lot this semester. She has worked mostly from invention and imagination, making paintings of single figures in a space. What is especially interesting is how broadly she will rework the paintings, very willfully destroying them in search of a stronger composition. When I think of Abby, I think of her expressionist mark making, giving all her work a kinetic energy. When asked what was her most meaningful experience in the department, she said her ability to exchange prints with friends, which points to her spirit of generosity. And looking at her prints, it is clear that she loves the printmaking process. Drawing, cutting, inking, proofing, and most importantly for Abby, reacting to the image off the press. Through hard work, she has discovered a pictorial language immersed in the tradition of early modernism, but of today and her own. After graduation, Abby plans on working as a software engineer and continuing, as she wrote in our survey with an exclamation point, her art practice. It has been my absolute pleasure to work with you, Abby. Stay in touch with us and happy graduation. Elizabeth Earls graduated in the fall of 2020, studying painting and printmaking as a studio art major. 
Working from life with an emphasis on landscape, the figure, and self-portraiture, Elizabeth's compositions explore the potency of an open-ended process. I had the pleasure of working with Elizabeth in several studio courses and was always struck by her awareness and attentiveness to the possibilities of painting. Her appetite for painting has led her to study constantly, and so she attended such programs as the Mount Gretna Studio School, the International Center for the Arts in Umbria, Italy, the New York Studio School Summer Drawing Marathon, and a semester abroad studying classical drawing and painting in Florence, Italy. Her painting studies have continued in 2021 with her, with her participation in an online painting course at the New York Studio School with Jonathan Harkin. And currently, Elizabeth hopes to attend a graduate program in the fall of 2022. Elizabeth, we have high hopes for you. Keep exploring and keep making. Congratulations. As a double major in psychology and studio art, Catherine Hales was a passionate student who excelled in both majors. I met Catherine in the fall of 2018 as my life drawing student. I later served as her major advisor and went on to see her flourish as an artist. Catherine always came to class ready to learn with an upbeat attitude and a willingness to work hard. She was open to criticism and was adept at learning from her failures and building upon her successes. In her last semester at the college, Catherine merged her passions for art and psychology into a semester long project. Through a series of charcoal drawings, Catherine explored the psychology of domestic spaces. As if she weren't busy enough with two majors, in 2020, Catherine served as the president of Phi Mu Fraternity, Gamma Alpha Chapter. She also interned with the Viva Center and the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Currently, Catherine is realizing her goals in the field of psychology and is now employed as a mental health counselor. In the fall, she will attend Vanderbilt University to seek an MED in human developmental counseling. I have no doubt that Catherine's intellect, work ethic, and positive attitude will yield her much success in the future. Congratulations, Catherine. June Hodge graduated with a major in art history and a minor in accounting. She particularly enjoyed her work on the curatorial project from concept to realization and installation at the Mascarelli Museum of Art. Bridging her interests in art and business, she was the director of strategy and operation for Agency 1693, a marketing organization in the Mason School of Business. June also served as VP of social media and digital content for the organization Applaud Music Group Inc. While studying abroad, she was a database marketing intern at the company Co-Registras. From her time in the department and coursework in art and art history, June takes away the rewarding ability to see, recognize, and interpret the world of art and abundance of images around us. I remember June's always astute and engaging comments in class. She is bright, articulate, and thoughtful, pursuing her work with both discipline and creativity. These are all qualities that will serve her well, whether as financial analyst at IBM or anywhere else, the world of finance certainly gains a wonderful new addition. June, I am confident in your success, and we all wish you the best. As Caroline Katz's advisor in art history, I'm delighted to celebrate her commencement in the class of 2021, although she actually graduated in December of last year. I have known Caroline since 2018, when she enrolled in my course on Arts of North America. Though somewhat quiet in class, she wrote very well, scoring high marks on her weekly memos and on her term paper, which examined a painting by the 19th century Quaker artist Edward Hicks at the Art Museums of Colonial Williamsburg. As a student gifted in speaking both Spanish and Italian, Caroline combined her linguistic ability with art history during a study abroad program in Milan during the spring semester of 2019. Throughout her time at William & Mary, she was also active in extracurricular volunteer work for various organizations, including the Alzheimer's Association of the National Capital Area. 
During her last semester of college, Caroline enrolled in an independent study course with me that resulted in an excellent research paper exploring the significance of house paint as an artistic medium used by Pablo Picasso in his masterpiece, Guernica, and other works. Her paper was so strong that I suggested she submit it to a journal for publication. Early this spring, she learned that her manuscript has been accepted by Asterisk, the Yale University Undergraduate Journal of Art and Art History. Congratulations, Caroline, and best wishes for the future. Kristen Lauritsen graduates with a double major in art history and government. As a James Monroe Scholar, Kristen secured funding from the Child Center for not one, but two research projects. While in college, she worked as a research assistant to the Global Research Institute on the Aid Data Listening to Leaders team. Kristen arrived at William & Mary thinking that she will only major in government, but her interest in art history brought her to our department and the class in modern art with Professor Palermo convinced her to stay in our department. She soon realized that art history is not only a subject she enjoyed, but also that art history informed her understanding of world politics. She took some of her favorite classes in this department and learned how well her two majors actually complemented each other, art being so tied to social and political movements. Indeed, one of her projects funded by the Charles Center addressed the art of the civil rights movement. Kristen's knowledge, excellent communication skills, curiosity and interest in learning led her to AmeriCorps. This fall, she will start a position there with the Literacy Lab in Washington, DC, providing literacy resources and tutoring to DC public schools. Congratulations, Kristen. We wish you the best and have all confidence in your success. Anna came to William & Mary in 2017 as a 1693 scholar with an interest in art history. I first had her as a student that spring in a class on Baroque art, but I got to know her much better as a sophomore in methods the next year. By then, Hannah's passion for cultural heritage was very evident. She chose to look into the ongoing controversy of the British Museum's ownership of the Rosetta Stone, researching the particulars of its discovery and removal from Egypt, its role as a cultural icon, and its centrality to the idea of the Universal Museum. Her work on the Rosetta Stone is typical of her willingness to consider all sides of an issue. In subsequent summers, Hannah pursued this work on cultural heritage in her internships at the Getty Museum and at the Smithsonian, where as an intern in the repatriation department of the Smithsonian's National Museum of, America, of the American Indian, she researched and completed a white paper on the legal status of native items that had been removed from 19th century zones of conflict. <clears throat> Hannah spent her junior year at Oxford and in Italy. At Oxford especially, she continued her work on issues of cultural heritage. Along the way, Hannah garnered rich experience and enlarged her already impressive array of languages. Notable for her diligence and poise, Hannah maintained a wide array of commitments, albeit virtually, this year. Both qualities were on display this past semester in her presentations for the Capstone Colloquium and the Curatorial Project. She has also continued her work on the, excuse me, on the complex relationship between cultural heritage and the law. In Art, Law, and War, she explores the disconnect between European, European, European legal ideas and the conditions of the Plains Indians. Hannah continues to intern for the European Research Council's Project in Antiquities Looting and Antiquities Looting and plans to apply to law school in preparation for a career in law art. Um, in art law. Given her thoughtful intelligence, passion for the subject, and grace under pressure, I look forward to seeing her argue her cases at The Hague. Best of luck, Hannah. Liam Warrior is a studio fine arts major who concentrated in painting, printmaking, and drawing. 
I had the pleasure of seeing her work develop over the course of three semesters as a painter. Her paintings from life are beautiful, exhibiting an unusually strong eye for confidently placed color planes that define perceived light and carve out a clear sense of painterly space. However, it was not until the advanced painting class that I saw Leah's hidden talent, that of gesture drawing. Leah's embrace of intuitive gesture allowed her compositions to become more spatially complex and satisfying, resulting in works such as this painting behind me. Her command of drawing was not completely surprising as we were familiar with Leah's summer sketchbook assignment in which she explored a rich and exciting range of characters, techniques, materials, and subjects. Abstract, figurative, dreamlike images, circus performers. Leah describes her own work as that of balancing contradictory values. And so in contrast to the paintings, her drawings serve to appeal to a darker yet playful psychological reading of the work. Leah, keep working to explore those contradictions. Congratulations, and we wish you all the best in every future endeavor. One of my great challenges over the past couple of years has been correctly addressing emails to Charles Joseph Parsons, which I have frequently found myself doing as I advised him on a wonderful senior thesis on the understudied and misunderstood work of the modernist sculptor and painter, Ann Truitt. Charlie plans to pursue a career in museums after graduation. During his time at William & Mary, he has prepared for that career with two years interning at the Muscarelli Museum of Art here on campus and with a Woody internship in museum studies, which allowed him to work at the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. He has also worked as a guide in the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. Apart from this intense engagement with art and its collection and exhibition, Charlie has minored in data science and been a member of Sandbox Improv. A major in studio art, Kayla Payne's concentration was in painting and printmaking. My experience with Kayla as her teacher and advisor was that she was hardworking, quick to listen, produced high quality work, and was also quite diverse in her interest in 2D art. Kayla was recently granted a residency at the Visual Arts Center of Richmond, where she is focusing on printmaking and painting. Kayla's future plans include writing and book illustration. Congratulations, and I wish you the very best, Kayla. Congratulations to Kristen Rines on graduating in the class of 2021. I first met Kristen in 2017 when she enrolled in my course on 19th century American art. That course met in a very uncongenial classroom in Small Hall where discussion was difficult, but Kristen kept the conversation going with her many insightful comments and questions. She also wrote a great term paper on a painting by John Singer Sargent that she saw in a traveling exhibition near her home in Tennessee. For her semester project in my art and ecology course, she developed an interesting and very original paper on competitive rowing as a form of environmental performance art. Last fall in my seminar on art and environmental justice, Kristen wrote a term paper on Sammy Baloji, an extraordinarily interesting contemporary multimedia artist from the Democratic Republic of Congo, whose work explores the legacy of colonial resource extraction. She also undertook an independent study project with me, critically examining the ephemeral art and economic dilemmas of the Occupy movement. As this brief survey suggests, Kristen's curiosity ranges far and wide, a fact that will serve her well in the future as she pursues a career in law. Good luck, Kristen. I had known Sarah from the fall of 2018 when she came to me with an idea for an independent study. 
which as I recollect started out as a discussion of Japanese-Dutch interactions in the 17th century and ended up as a wonderfully thorough paper on a number of rare and exquisite jacquer ch lacquer chests created by a particular family of Japanese lacquer workers, the high administrators of the Dutch East India Company, who treasured them until they sold them at enormous profit. This project is typical of Sarah, who has a knack for finding unlikely topics that she opens up to important and original insights. This was evident in a short paper on 17th century zoos and in her honest thesis on Abraham Hondius's dog market, a picture you can see at the Kennel Club Museum in New York. Sarah addressed this topic with intelligence, wit, and again her ability to use the telling motifs and details of the painting to address key issues such as the rise of the art market and the changing role of classification, not to mention giving illuminating attention to an undeservedly obscure artist and clarifying the meaning of a complex painting. In her time at William & Mary, Sarah's interests have ranged far afield, from ancient Greek to logic, and like so many art historians, she has not altogether repressed a passion for studio art. Sarah spent the second semester of her junior year at the Freie Universiteit Amsterdam, and so has an international experience of COVID. Despite disruptions and dislocations, she completed her coursework with her usual excellence. Sarah's long-standing goal is to pursue a career in conservation. If she pursues that path, her combination of a meticulous attention to detail and understated but passionate creative intelligence should ensure her success. Best of luck, Sarah. Savannah Singleton is a double major in art history and anthropology. During her time at the college, her original interest in archaeology has expanded to a broader study of both old and contemporary material culture, with a particular focus on art and industry heritage. Coming from Birmingham, Alabama, she contemplates her hometown's past, present, and the future through a thought-provoking capstone research on the Sloth Furnaces National Historical Landmark that confronts issues of the construction of history and the rule of industrial museums. She benefited from the sense of community among art history majors and the encouragement from professors towards interdisciplinary approaches. Savannah was the co-head guide of the William & Mary Rock Climbing Club. She enjoys painting in her free time and has exhibited her own work in the Vulcan Material Museum in Birmingham. After graduation, she helps to pursue a growing interest in architecture. I'm uh, very happy to be doing this video for Jordan Soleil. Uh, Jordan and her numerous peers and colleagues have had the unhappy distinction to be the second graduate, graduating class to complete their final year during the pandemic. Um, this has been an extremely stressful and demanding period for them, and very, I'm very happy to see that Jordan is wrapping up her final semester at William & Mary on time and in good health, which is no small accomplishment. Also, since Jordan has been working remotely uh, for almost exclusively for the past 16 months, I thought it only fitting to shoot, the, shoot this video in the architecture studio. And it's still as messy and unruly as she probably remembers it to be. Um, I've had Jordan in my architecture studio for at least three, possibly, I think four semesters. Um, and that's a lot of time to get to know someone and see them grow into their work. And regardless of what path Jordan decides to pursue, she can always remember that she's produced one of the nicest hand drawing that's been done in the studio over the past few years. And Jordan does have a range of interests as reflected in her double major of art and classical civilizations. 
She's a 3D concentrator in art, and while obviously taking architecture courses, she says she's really enjoyed taking the figure and the body one and two. In her classical civilization major, she spread her studies around through a number of different areas, such as ancient plays, ancient magic, Latin, and ancient art and architecture. Her senior research in that department focused on visually analyzing debated sections of the Parthenon frieze, which sounds incredibly interesting to me. Her postgraduate plans are still in the works while waiting for COVID to become less of a factor, and she hopes to combine her two majors and her career plans and possibly gain some experience as a museum employee or intern. She'd also love to spend a few summers on an excavation site in Greece once they open up again. Long term, she thinks she'd really like to work with ancient architecture, whether in the realm of material preservation or to aid in, in developing reconstructions for ancient buildings. Jordan, it's been a pleasure working with you over these past two and a half years, and I'm excited about your choices for the future. I wish you the very best in whatever you do, and I hope you'll make it back this way in the not too distant future. Take care. Evan Squires is a two-dimensional studio art major. Evan notes that the most valuable lesson he's learned during his time here at William & Mary has been to focus on experience and learning and to not be afraid of experimentation and failure for it will make him a better artist. And indeed, this tenant has served him well in his willingness to, as the playwright Samuel Beckett has said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter, try again, fail again, fail better. His work has grown tremendously. While Evan's characters originate in his imagination, it's his work from drawing a live model that has helped his characters to take on lives all their own. Evan plans to work in the field of character and game design. We look forward to the worlds you'll create, Evan. Congratulations. Catherine Welch is a double major in history and art history. She has concentrated in curatorial studies and plans to pursue a master's degree in museum studies in the fall of 2022. Catherine has interned with Houston's Museum of Fine Arts in the education department. This is where she found her love for museum education. Her experiences with other museums in the Houston area sparked her interest in working within the museum industry. She has a particular passion for social justice and aims to use her degree in museum education to help spread awareness of social issues through the medium of material culture. We congratulate you, Catherine, and wish you the best in your future endeavors. Well done. I've gotten to know Dylan Wilson well over the last two and a half years. I have served as a department advisor and have had him in five studio courses, including independent study in printmaking last semester. Dylan is a studio arts major with a minor in psychology. He was heavily invested, as evidenced by the quality of the work, in the studio art major exhibitions at both the Stryker Center last spring and our virtual exhibition this past fall. As an artist, Dylan has explored several mediums in our department, but has concentrated his efforts mainly in printmaking and drawing. To quote his life drawing professor, Nicole Santiago, despite his quiet demeanor, Dylan stood out among his classmates as a student who approached his work with integrity and sincerity. It was clear during our weekly individual Zoom meetings that he had put care and thought into each piece. In addition to his work ethic, his receptivity to criticism and the thoughtful way he approached art making were major factors in his artistic successes. I would agree with all that Professor Santiago said and add that Dylan is a natural printmaker. He is someone who loves drawing, can see big design elements, and has an impeccable sense of craft. Dylan listens carefully, incorporates and considers suggestions, but clearly above all else, makes the work for himself, trying to express his particular interests and in how he sees the world. This bodes very well for future investigation, and I look forward to seeing his next body of work. 
After graduation, Dylan is considering careers in archival or library science and will undoubtedly continue to create narrative-based images. It's been my absolute pleasure to work with you, Dylan. Stay in touch with us and happy graduation. Iris Wu is a double major in mathematics and studio art with a concentration in 2D art and a particular focus in photography. Iris successfully defended her honors thesis in photography titled Echo Fragments at the end of April and produced a beautiful and powerful solo exhibition in the Andrews Gallery. She is scheduled to exhibit another version of Echo Fragments at the Linda Matney Gallery here in Williamsburg in June. Iris has received much recognition and a number of awards for her work as a student, including the Studio Art Graduating Scholar Award, the Joseph Palin Thorley Memorial Scholarship. She's a two-time recipient of the Louis E. Catron Grant for Artistic Development. In 2020, she was on the William & Mary's uh, Dean's List, and she received a National Student Award at the Society for Photographic Education Conference in Houston, Texas last year. At this conference, curators from the Museum of Fine Arts Houston also purchased her handmade zine and two of her gelatin silver photographs for the museum's permanent collection. She's been invited to exhibit her work in eight group exhibitions to date in cities across the country, including Chicago, Denver, Richmond, Houston, Dallas, and Belfast, Maine. When asked about her post-graduation plans, Iris said she's embarking on a two to three month road trip across the United States. She said she is currently in the process of building a wooden platform for the back of her vehicle so she can sleep in the car as much as possible. During the trip, she plans to keep photographing, read books, think, and write. She is planning to apply to graduate school for an MFA in photography at the end of 2022. Iris, after working closely with you every semester for the past seven semesters, your presence in Andrews Hall will be deeply missed. I will particularly miss popping my head into the digital photography lab and witnessing you agonize over completing your math homework so you can get back into the darkroom. Quietly and modestly, you've been an inspiring positive force in studio art for your peers and your faculty. I am thrilled to see all the success that's come your way so far, all so well deserved and undoubtedly so much more to come. Congratulations, Iris. Don't get eaten by a bear on your road trip. Congratulations to the William & Mary Art and Art History Class of 2021.